We will be waiting for one more minute, okay, and uh, then we'll be starting. Okay, well, guys, <clears throat> uh, let us start discussing our module 9.3. Till now, what we had discussed, we had discussed about the, we will be just going for a quick review. We had discussed about the hand tools, power tools. We had discussed about the general requirements for the, for the work equipment in which we discussed about different type of equipments. We had discussed about the standards and the confirmation that from where we need, we need to get 
conformity, especially over here, we will be getting conformity from the European standard. And then we discussed about the use and uh, the administrative control, like uh, information instruction training, supervision, as well as we move to the uh, precautions for the use of hand tools, power tools. And we discussed about the different kinds of maintenance. And we also learned that why maintenance is high risk activity. Then we move to the <clears throat> uh, discussion for the control measures of maintenance activities. Yes, please keep your mics on mute. Okay, after that, uh, after that, what did we discuss? We discussed about uh, different control measures. Okay, or the factors, including the controls, including the emergency stop, equipment, lighting, and space. Then we move to the discussion of hand tools and power tools, where we discussed about different kind of hand tools, their hazards, and controls. After that, we move to the uh, different kind of uh, power tools. Basically, these are also hand tools. We discussed about their hazards and controls. And that was our, uh, also we discussed about the requirements of safe practice. Uh, that was the end of our module two. Now we are going to discuss about the machinery hazards that in case if we are using any machine, what kind of hazards do we have? Basically, whenever we are using any machine, we are having two main kind of hazards. One of them we call it mechanical hazard. One of them we call it non-mechanical hazard. Mechanical hazards are including all those hazards which are basically arising by the moving parts of the machine. Okay, when you get contact with or being caught up by the moving parts of the machine. Okay, so guys, this is very important to know the difference between mechanical hazards and non-mechanical. Whatever the hazards which are arising by the moving parts of the machine, we call it mechanical hazard. And all those hazards which are indirectly related or which are not related to the moving part of the machine, we call them non-mechanical hazard. For example, hazards from power source, okay? Or whatever the things which are being emitted by the machine. Examples of the mechanical and non-mechanical hazards we are going to discuss. What are mechanical hazards like crushing, shearing, cutting or swearing, entanglement, drying in or trapping hazards, impact, stabbing or puncture, friction or abrasion, high pressure fluid injection. What are these hazards? We are going to discuss all these one by one. Okay, and uh, these hazards are defined in one, if you open your book, okay, let me give you the reference, this is important. Open your book and move to page number. Just... Yeah, open your book, page number 9-12, IG2, page 9-12. I don't have camera, otherwise I would be telling, I would have told you. Okay, we are having British standard, okay, uh, and uh, that British standard or that ISO standard is 12,120.10, which is about the safety of machinery. Let me try to mention it over here. ISO 12,100-2010, okay, and these standards are basically relating to safety of machinery, okay, these are the standards based on, from this, from these standards, we got the list of these hazards, okay, and uh, now, let us start discussing all these standards one by one. What are these? First of all, crushing. 
i hope so there is no need to explain the crushing okay but uh, the picture is basically self explaining and but in case if you need crushing is basically the body when it is basically being trapped between two moving parts or one moving part and one fixed or stationary part or stationary object this is what we call crushing okay our next hazard is shearing shearing is when your any of your body part comes in two moving parts of the machine or one moving part and one fixed part and it can get cut or it can get uh, you can say amputated okay we call it shearing next is cutting or swearing in cutting or swearing over here you can clearly identify what would be the meaning of cutting or swearing but when you are having contact of your let's say your hand with any moving part of the machine which is having very sharp edge or for example blades are there you can have cut or severing next is entanglement entanglement is when your uh, loose cloth your uh, hairs okay or any other uh, part of your body or associated with your body for example if you have lifted any kind of material any loose part if it gets um, you can say roll over with the moving part of the machine we call it entanglement then uh, next is a drying in or nipping in or trapping hazard if your hand comes over here or any part of the body comes over here we call it drying in and next is impact impact is when the moving part of the machine is going to hit you this is impact next is a stabbing or punctured when you are having sharp parts of the machine or part of the material ejected remember this is part of the machine when it is going to be ejected and it can hit you and can give you some small uh, puncture inside your body we call it stabbing or puncture next is a friction or abrasion friction or abrasion is when for example over here we are having moving part of the machine and your hand comes in contact your any body part comes in contact over here and because of the uh, rough surface you are having some kind of injury on your body this is what we call friction or abrasion next is a uh, high pressure fluid injection okay uh, in case if we are having some machine and uh, from that machine if we are having liquids which can be released under high pressure and that uh, liquid can get penetrate inside our body that would be giving us uh, some kind of injury and that is also considered as mechanical hazard this it may have small entry wound but it can travel through the tissues and can give you severe injury and also infection as well uh, over here uh, guys till now what we have discussed all these are mechanical hazards okay starting from crushing shearing cutting or severing and entanglement uh, drying and or trapping impact stabbing or puncture friction or abrasion high pressure fluid injection okay so all these are the mechanical hazard what do you think what comes in non mechanical hazard it's a question so can anyone write in the chat or if just we can explain the non mechanical hazard related with the electricity yes the power source we can say very nice okay chemical assault we can say as a non mechanical assault chemical yeah chemical which are being used in the machine noise okay noise vibration and vibration also yes uh, and uh, dust dust also which would be arising from the use of machine yes, yes. these are all the non mechanical hazard yes please
Okay, great. Uh, I guess you were saying something and I got you. Electrical shock, yes. This is also one of the hazard. So these are non-mechanical hazard. Uh, what are these? Electricity, noise, vibration, hazardous substances, ionizing radiation, non-ionizing radiation. If we are having these from the machine, extreme temperature, ergonomics, slips, trip and falls, fire and explosion. Yes, these are all those hazards which are basically not arising because of the moving moving part of the machine or because of the movement of the machine. So these are basically non-mechanical hazard. And if you look on your book on page 9-15, okay, there is one box with the name topic focused. These are the hazards listed out over there. There is one question. You are seeing, you are watching one picture over here. Right? In this picture, what you have to do, you have to list out, just like this one, just like this one. You have to identify the mechanical hazard and non-mechanical hazard. I am going to give you this one as an assignment. Can you do this? Very simple. Yes, sir, done. Yeah, done already. Oh, very nice. Okay, moving next. That is our next module. The next module is basically control Myers for. One minute. Can you go back to the slide? I have to take photo. Photo will be shared in the group, WhatsApp group. <coughs> Okay, let's uh, let's move to our next module. That is control measures for machinery hazards. What are the control measures for machinery hazard? Either it is mechanical or non-mechanical hazard. Of course, we need to control them. How we are controlling them? See, for any kind of machinery, we are basically safeguarding safeguarding the machine. Safeguarding the machine means we are putting some kind of guards over there. Okay, what are those guards? We are having different kinds of guards and different kind of protective techniques to, uh, to safeguard you, to save the workers or the employees who are going to use that machine. What are those? We are having fixed guards, interlock guards, adjustable or self-adjusting guards, sensitive protective equipment for example trip devices or sensors two hand controls hold to run controls emergency stop controls protective appliances are there personal protective equipment and then information instruction training and supervision these are the different control methods we are having okay remember over here uh, this is mentioned in formation, instruction, training, and supervision below the personal protective equipment. Remember, this is administrative control, information, instruction, training, and supervision. This is administrative control. Okay, and it can be applied for all kind of, uh, you can say, hazard. And by the way, it will be coming up always before personal protection. Okay, moving or proceeding next. <clears throat> Sorry. What different kind of guards we are having on the machine? You would have heard the name Fiat. F I A T. What is that? Can anyone tell me? What is Fiat? F I A T. This, this what is, is a that? type of guard which we use in our machine to protect right. our cellar. Good, 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 good. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying, what is Fiat? What is that? 
कार कंपनी यस और नो यस सर ओके यस जस्ट आई आई वाज जस्ट आस्किंग यू आई मीन इट हैज नथिंग टू डू विद दैट जस्ट टू कीप जस्ट टू गेट यू एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू मेमोराइज इट सो व्हाट डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ सेफ गार्ड्स वी आर हैविंग वन ऑफ देम इज फिक्स्ड गार्ड्स इंटरलॉक गार्ड्स एडजस्टेबल और सेल्फ एडजस्टिंग गार्ड्स and trip devices or sensors what are these let us start discussing all these one by one what we will be discussing we will be discussing that how these guards are working and what are you can say their advantages or disadvantages here we can see the fixed guards are there okay the fixed guard are those guards which you fix them on the moving parts of the machine to avoid or to prevent you from getting exposed with the mechanical hazards of the machine usually uh, these are basically those guards which are completely preventing access to dangerous parts of the machine uh, these are fixed in place and require a tool or some kind of special uh, you can say equipment okay for example a key may be required to open them so that you can get access inside the machine for some kind of maintenance activities and by the way this is the limitation of these guards that yes these are giving you high level of protection okay but on the other side you cannot get in directly you have to open the guard to fix the machine and once you open the guard to fix the machine to maintain the machine at that time if machine would be operating or someone can operate or if someone will operate the machine then of course it is uh, very dangerous for us by the way uh, let me identify give me a minute guys let me try to find out one video for you guys that would be increasing the intensity of uh, these guards okay and some of you might have seen this video okay and this is basically about the not about the guards exactly but it is all about the lockout tagout procedure that either if we are having the guards but you don't go for the proper lockout tagout procedures to be followed then what could happen like over here this guy he comes in the uh, in the morning time saying good morning to his colleague and starts operating his machine on the other side someone is maintaining the machine by switching off the machine we just have a look on the machine that someone has turned off my machine without asking anyone he switches on the machine and starts operating it on the other side we see that during the maintenance job a guy got injured so what happened over there when you don't follow the proper procedures for example isolation or locking out and tagging out procedures if you don't follow them properly then this kind of incidents could occur so over here along with these guards whenever we are going for some kind of maintenance uh, any kind of maintenance for example pre plan ppm or uh, some kind of breakdown maintenance we must make sure that machines are isolated okay and uh, th then only you can say yes we are uh, protected this is what we discussed about the fixed guard and there is a question that apart from the mechanical hazard what hazards can fixed guard provide protection against other than mechanical hazard do we have some other protection yes it required because the the protection which is 
means the part which is being protector of the equipment there is a hazard in, the, in that also the that also can break i want to say right okay okay nice any other hazard like it is saying that all the mechanical hazards would be avoided with these fixed guards right like entanglement swearing tearing or some kind of cutting some kind of impact ejected parts right but other than mechanical hazard what else what other kind of protection we are having safe guarding method emergency shut off emergency shutdown okay all non mechanical hazard guys like electricity radiation hot surfaces noise ejection of dust right or wrong yes or no we discussed two different kind of hazard one of them were mechanical hazard these are all mechanical hazards okay other than these mechanical hazard these are non mechanical hazard so if we talk about these guards they are protecting us from mechanical hazard as well as non mechanical hazard right yes sir okay okay fine next is interlock guard interlock guard the best example of the interlock guard is your microwave oven okay if the guard is open you cannot operate the machine if the guard is closed only then you can operate the machine right in that if you just put the same kind of guard in the industry okay you would have uh, a better understanding that for the maintenance job or for any kind of shutdown these kind of guards are not worthy for us why because i have to lock the machine i have to uh, properly guard the machine before i am going to test it again for example if i move inside the machine and i am going to repair it so after repairing just to have a test or just to give it a test run i have to assemble the complete machine okay after that i can give it a test run otherwise i cannot give it because until or unless the guards are not interlocked okay the machine is not going to be operatable so these are the limitations that you can you can bypass the system that sometimes uh, like on your uh, the one of the example is your microwave and the other example is your juicer machine okay on the juicer machine nowadays we are having one small lock over there okay if you press the lock only in that way the juicer machine will be working otherwise that machine whatever the way you are going to operate it it is not going to operate and by the way the bad thing about that machine is if the if we are having today my camera is not working i don't know why okay in case let's say if on from the top if this is the button which has to pressed which has to be pressed so that the machine is going to rotate okay if without putting the jug over there on the juicer machine if you press this button and then you turn the machine on the machine will start rotating so that is why it is mentioned that ma machine can be bypassed person may gain access by closing the guard around them they just open the guard okay and they get in and then they close the guard what we have to do we need to have some serious rules so that we can enforce the use of this kind of guard otherwise if you don't enforce serious rules these kind of guards would be hazardous for us why because people they don't like to use these guards what will be happening they will be removing these guards and they will be running the machine without the guards is it okay clear any confusion question yes it is clear okay next is adjustable and self adjusting guards self adjusting guards or adjustable guards what are those here you can see the example in the pictures 
these are adjustable guards for example if you are going to cut a wood okay what you will be doing you will based on the thickness of the wood you are going to adjust them you can keep them up you can keep them down basically yes this is giving you uh, some kind of protection these are just like this fixed guard but of course these are adjustable you fix them on one position and you adjust them on one position and then you use the machine these are basically self adjusting guards springs are over there okay and based on the for example thickness of the wood okay these are going to work and uh, these are for me these are good as compared to let me try to highlight for me these guards are good as compared to this one because these will be getting adjusted based on the thickness of whatever the activity we are going to do but this one will be remaining on one place and uh, next is sensitive protective equipment which are trip devices which are the sensors okay remember it is not a physical barrier sensors are just like the sensors of doors in big malls like panda like nestro like uh, center point like uh, zara whatever wherever lulu wherever you are going you are having different kind of uh, in different kind of malls we are having doors self opening and closing doors whenever they are detecting the person is coming they are getting open so these are just like those devices in case if they will be sensing a person over there person is not standing in its uh, i mean in the safe zone okay and or the person is standing somewhere else or in the danger zone this guard will be keep, uh, will be switching off the machine and it will keep the machine switching off you cannot turn on the machine okay and uh, this is by the way its limitation and uh, that uh, until or unless it is not going to sense you it is not going to work or until or unless if it keeps sensing you it is not going to work sometimes we are having some kind of pressure mats over there that if you are standing only on the mat then it will be working on some trip bars are there photoelectric devices are there which are sensing sensing us next is two hand control in the two hand control guards are uh, this kind of guard is basically uh, you will be having two knobs on the machine okay as you can see this one until or unless you don't hold both of these holders and um, you don't keep them holder uh, you don't keep them hold the machine is not going to be operatable why because it has to sense your hands over here okay this is good because we are protecting our hands but this is bad why because one worker is if it is if these are very close to each other one worker can put his hands over here and here as well i mean one hand on both of the sensors one thing second thing two workers one will be holding it from here one will be holding it from here can bypass these kind of sensors so advantages are there disadvantages are there yes next is emergency stop control in case of an emergency what you can do you can stop the machine we are having emergency stop control it should bring the machine to to a safe stop as quickly as possible whenever you see there is a hazard you can press the button you can pull the chain you can pull the cord and machine will be stopped but over here machine can only be restarted using the reset button once you stop the machine you have to reset the machine then the machine will be starting back and in case if you are going to release the button machine is not going to get start what is the disadvantage disadvantage or limitation is the main limitation is once you see someone that it is the machine is going to crush someone machine is going to uh, entangle someone or it is the person is already entangled then this machine this button is going to be pressed or until or unless a human is not going to observe 
this guard or this kind of guard is not going to be operatable let me show you one video that is what i am thinking about to show you where is that Over here, as you can see, this is the emergency stop. Now, what are the limitations of this? What do you think? What are the limitations of this? Come on, guys. If the second person is not observed properly, yes, it is. Yeah, uh, the limitations is second person's observation. Uh, second and... person observation, very nice, very nice. Okay. The demerit is that it is being operated by two persons. Mm, yes, two persons. Okay. Maybe it is not in your access. Even if you are the one who can sense that but perhaps it is not in your access means where exactly is the location of this button right second is in case if the person is going to observe that hazard is arising already or it has been erosion already then you will be able to switch it off the machine is not going to switch itself off automatically Right, so these are the limitation of uh, emergency stop controls. Next is next is uh, protective appliances. We are using some kind of protective appliances so that we can prevent our hands to get in contact directly with the machine. For example, uh, these are basically these kind of guards or protective appliances are designed to keep the operator's hand away from the danger. For example, we can have push some kind of push sticks, jigs, clamps are there. Different kind of protective appliances are there. And uh, now, some specific machinery is there. Okay, we are going to discuss about some specific machinery. But before we move to uh, specific machinery just i wanted to ask if all these all these guards are clear for everyone yes or no please give me one feedback and then we'll be proceeding yes sir clear every guard. okay great what we have discussed we have discussed about the fixed guard about the interlock guards fixed guards are just like guards around your uh, pedestal fan interlock guards are the guards of your microwave oven and then self-adjusting guards or uh, adjustable guards are those guards which you can see the guards on the table mounted saw or circular saw then sensors are there which we call them trip devices two hand controls are there okay after that we are having uh, emergency stop controls and protective appliances this is what we had discussed now now we are going to discuss about specific machinery and uh, we are having uh, like manufacturing and maintenance machinery in which we are having bench top grinder pedestal uh, drill we will see them what are what uh, what are these things in the retail machinery we are having compactor agricultural and horticultural machinery for example cylinder mover steamer or brush cutter chainsaw Construction machinery includes cement mixer, bench mounted circular saw. What are these? We will see them. Basically, what we are going to do, we are going to identify mechanical and non-mechanical hazards of these machines, as well as what we are going to do. We are going to identify the control measures and we already had discussed the mechanical hazard non-mechanical hazard we already had defined the control measures what we are going to do 
we are going to identify that if all the mechanical hazards are over here, this machine is giving me all kind of mechanical hazard, all kind of non-mechanical hazard, all kind of control measures are going to be applied over here or from the list of all mechanical, all non-mechanical or all control measures, we have to choose some specific points which are applicable to these machines. Yes or no, we are going to see them. So again, all the, all the machines like bench top grinder, pedestal drill, standard mover, all these, we are going to wash them one by one. First, bench top grinder. This is your bench top grinder. Okay, pedestal drill. This is your pedestal drill. You might have seen it in your, uh, on your site, perhaps. If it is applicable on your site or not, it depends upon uh, the scenario. Then stimmer brush or stimmer or brush cutter. Usually it is petrol driven. We are using it for the cutting of the grass. Chainsaw, you would have seen that. Okay, compactor, you would have seen that. Cement mixer, you might have seen that. Okay then bench mounted table saw or circular saw question is <clears throat> what we have to do let me give you an assignment nice this is a good way to uh, get an idea about it uh, shall we go with the assignment or you would like to discuss it over here now Discuss, Come on, guys. Sorry? Discussing in the group better. Discussing in the group. Okay, let's go with the bench top grinder. Grinder. Come on, everyone. I want everyone to mention. Everyone means everyone. Okay, bench top grinder. Mention the mechanical hazards. Just a minute. Uh, mechanical hazards in the chat. I want the presence of everyone. Sorry, I did not send it to everyone. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Only mechanical hazard, huh? Fracture, sir. Come on. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your participation. Shazan, please mention it in the chat. Okay. Shazan, I'm unable to hear you. I'm sorry about that. There is a voice interruption. Hand cut. Fracture. Dust. Guys, remember, only mechanical hazard, not the non-mechanical hazard. Broken wheel. What are the mechanical hazards? These are the mechanical hazard. Friction abrasion, tabbing puncture, impact, drying and nipping in, entanglement, cutting or severing, shearing, crushing. These are basically mechanical hazard. I am saying only about, I am asking only about the mechanical hazard. Now, use this slide, identify also this one, non-mechanical hazard, identify What are the mechanical hazard for bench top grinder? Mm, if someone does not know how to operate this machine after that, you have more chances to cut finger. Okay, nice. Sparks, okay. Everyone is sleeping. Only a few guys are writing there. Cutting. Okay. 
what about abrasion what about drying in or nipping in hazard entanglement no one is thinking about the mechanical hazard why shall i ask you to turn on your cameras and then we will discuss because today i cannot turn on my camera i don't know why i have to restart my pc Come on, guys. Crushing and crushing, sharing. Okay. Crushing. Okay. Swearing. Okay. Swearing. Use of untrained person. No. Don't go for the precaution. Noor. Focus on mechanical hazard. This is what I want. Entanglement. Yes, Abdullah. Very nice. Impact. Just focus. Impact. Impact. How it? How impact? Come on. How impact? Impact is over here. when you have this is impact right how yeah. we are having impact how we can have impact from this machine this machine is going to hit us in this way no impact is not applicable cutting stabbing puncture yes so regarding this machine this machine bench top grinder come on now think about it impact is for mechanical hazard yes we are discussing the mechanical hazard but this machine is not going to give you impact entanglement someone has mentioned stabbing or puncture yes that is good cutting is good now let us discuss the non mechanical hazard come on electric shock dust vibration electric shock very nice sparking yes noise good nawaz javed good okay yes dust come on non mechanical hazards which are not because of the moving part of the machine okay dust three times dust come on ergonomic ergonomics very nice Electro electricity, electricity. Yes, slip and trip. How <laughs> slip and trip? With this machine, don't Musculator just copy. Musculator pain. Sorry. Musculator pains due to vibration. Due to vibration, muscular pain. Okay. Noise. Yes. Ah, uh, Nawaz. How slip and trip? Yes, Mr. Vijay. Noise. 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 Yes. slip and trip how this machine can give you slip and trip but in case uh, if we use this machine uh, uh, come on yes nawaz come on yes nawaz come on sir in case if we if we use this machine there is uh, if uh, something lay on the ground and we can't see there is chance to okay, okay. Slip and trip okay for example if you are having any kind of liquid for example oil we are having this machine is having some kind of oil and if the oil leaks out on the ground then it can cause a slip hazard nice yes sir okay yes. very nice extreme temperature chemical hazard yes temperature yes very nice okay so what what are the control first of all avoid proper housekeeping first of all uh, giving proper housekeeping sir housekeeping okay yes, nice sir. a competent person competent person nice guard sir okay good ear plugs for yes, noise please. very nice yes sir pp is mr ramesh uh, see i think mr ramesh saying something yes mr ramesh the yeah, appropriate pp appropriate pp yes mr vijay job is sir guarding sorry guarding Emer what kind Emer of guard we will be using emergency stop control emergency stop control what kind of guard we will be using <coughs> apron someone mentioned apron glove okay fine pp will be used training proper training and supervision training and supervision 
Yes, very nice. Okay, let us go for steamer or brush cutter. What are the hazards? Ventilation for dust control, Shanavas, very nice. Okay, what are the dust control, oh, sorry, what are the control uh, hazards, first of all? For steamer or brush cutter, what are the mechanical hazards? Only mechanical hazard. I am saying mechanical Vibration. Hazard. Vibration is no, mechanical? No, no. Sorry, sir. Oh, no. no, no. Vibration is mechanical, no. Right? But so we will go for mechanical. Electricity is mechanical. No. no, no, sorry, sir. Sorry. Mechanical are those which are because of the moving part of the machine. Maybe you have only one mechanical hazard. Cutting. Okay. Cut. Yes, cut is mechanical hazard. Entanglement. Entanglement. Very nice. Okay. One more. Impact could be there. Impact. Impact could be there because the whole machine can move. Impact yeah. could be there. Yes. Okay. Hitting, yes, impact. Friction, friction okay. or what? Yeah, friction could be there. Yes. Okay, now what? Stabbing, yes, stabbing because of moving part. Very nice. Okay, what are the non mechanical hazards now? It is dust, vibration, dust, vibration. Nice. Vibration, very nice. Come nice. on, very nice. Dark. What else? Come on. It can trip. No. Tripping hazard. Tripping hazard. If it is placed on the ground, someone can trip. Okay. Guys, focus on this word. Patrol driven. Chemical hazard. Very yes. nice. Shanavas, can you explain electricity? Ele how electricity? It is petrol driven. Okay, yes, we are. We can have electricity. Okay, fine. But it is petrol driven. Okay. Chemical hazard. Shanavas, you mentioned chemical hazard. I like that. How chemical hazard? Come on. Petrol is a chemical. Petrol is a chemical. Very nice. Petrol is a chemical. Fumes are there. Very nice. Fire, Fire and explosion. Very nice. So what are the controls? Temperature. Proper maintenance. Proper maintenance. Excessive temperature. Excessive temperature. Okay, nice. How we are controlling the excessive temperature? If temperature will be high, we will... We will not perform our job. Right. What else? Come on, PPE. Okay, fine. Let us move further. Regarding chainsaw, shall we discuss this one? I think we are not using it much on the job site. Compactor, even we are not using it. Cement mixer, yes, this is being used on our sites occasionally. So, what are the mechanical hazards over here? Come on, guys. I'm not just asking hazard, I am asking Crafting. mechanical hazards. Sorry? Crafting. Could not understand. Can you please? Crushing, okay, yes. Entanglement, yes. Okay, crushing, yes. Hitting, how hitting? Yes, it can hit you. Okay, fine. Impact is there. Okay. What else? Extreme temperature. Temperature is mechanical? Okay, okay. It's non-mechanical. Right? Yeah, that is what actually I want to prepare your mind about the mechanical or non-mechanical. That is why we are taking different example. Come on, crushing, entanglement, rotation basket. What rotation will do? Nipping in, your hand can nip in, it can get pinched in, right? These are the hazards. What are non-mechanical hazards? Come on.
noise okay wherever we are having noise vibration would be there dust would be there okay come on nice what else hazardous substances hazardous substances very nice very nice extreme temperature extreme temperature nice we can have temperature friction would be there yes so what are the controls very nice mr vijay what are the controls come on by the way i i would like to really appreciate mr vijay he is not the guy who is having safety background and he is most of the time staying in the discussion i really appreciate you thank you sir next uh, welcome and inshallah you will be getting pass i am sure <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay guys and what about us sir <laughs> what about you uh, for see for all those uh, who are participating i don't need to take their names they uh, they know i appreciate them all the time okay for all those who are not participating i want them to participate <clears throat> okay so uh, what are the control measures over here competent person competent persons very nice competent competent person to operate guys whenever you have to apply any admis control measure okay think about elimination okay then substitution then engineering control then administrative control and then ppe so elimination can is possible over here yes nowadays what we are having like on our previous uh, project in jebel what we were doing we were not having these kind of concrete mixer on our job site we asked pre uh, i mean we were ordering the concrete and concrete trucks were coming we were not getting it mixed on our job site basically we were purchasing the concrete concrete trucks were coming and just we were bringing them on the site we were pouring the concrete on the required area so we were removing all these hazards all these mechanical or non mechanical hazards by the way but because additional equipment we were bringing so for that uh, additional equipment we were having some other additional hazards but yes elimination is possible what about isolation or sub uh, substitution yes this is possible now let us talk about the engineering control and engineering control what are the control measures over here we can implement come on lag out tag because this is the you, you see the revolving parts so we need to make sure that uh, proper uh, log out tag out de energization uh, yes so proper de energization very nice we can go for the log out tag out to make sure proper de energization is there energy control yes very nice mr adnan uh, very nice okay so after that administrative control whenever we used to talk about administrative control remember sign boards are administrative control i remember information training instruction supervision job rotation these are administrative control so whenever someone is going to ask you in the interview or anywhere that what kind of administrative control you are going to implement just say it simply information training instruction supervision khalas okay then next is the pp then come to the pp okay so over here uh, we are finished with cement mixer what about bench mounted table saw circular saw i guess now you guys are uh, enough trained you can identify about the mechanical hazards about the non mechanical hazard you are very clear about mechanical hazards non mechanical again just to give you an idea mechanical hazards are all those hazards which are arising because of the moving parts of the machine non mechanical hazards are all those hazards which are not because of the moving part which are indirect hazard okay and what are the control measures we are applying the guards basically guards are basically engineering controls 
okay when you are trying to solve the problem technically isolation locking out tagging out of the machine if we are going to maintain that okay so the uh, mechanical whenever we are applying the guards either these are fixed guard inter, uh, adjustable inter, uh, interlock guards or trip devices these are basically engineering controls right okay after that what are the main requirements for guards and safety devices first of all guards should be should be meeting the relevant standards okay as per standard we have to apply the guard then these should be strong these should be compatible with the machine operation and it, these guards should not be easy to defeat okay then we should be having proper vm for the inside part of the machine for example if you are applying the fixed guard over here we can see inside okay after that it should be able it should be giving you proper ventilation okay then easy to maintain okay designed to allow for maintenance for example you can open it you can go inside you can get inside the machine and you can maintain the machine and it should not be increasing the overall risk for example you are putting some kind of guard which is teasing the uh, operator what he will do he will just remove the guard and he will start operating the machine just consider PPE is for us. Guard is the PPE for the machine, you can say. Okay, just like that. So over here, we learned about the guards of the machine or the machine guarding. Over here, uh, shall I give you the assignment for this? Or you are going to discuss this with me. Identify the type of the guard and protective devices. What what is the guard over here? First of all, sir, here uh, they they make a cage type, so no unauthorized is entry. Yeah. Very nice. What is this cage? Just to control cage the unauthorized type. entry. Very nice. Okay. What is this cage type of guard? What guard is this? Come on. This, this is a cable. It's a cage type. Cage type. Yeah, it is uh, meant for, for, okay. for, for ventilation. You see, can system. we say this okay. as a adjustable guard? Is it adjustable? Can we move this cage right left? No, the gate we can move no? We can open close. Gate, gate is gate is to get access, but the guard is fixed guard. Right or right or wrong? Yes, sir. Be right, sir. Okay, this is fixed guard. Okay, what about the uh, you can say protective devices over here? One electric device, sir. Mm -hmm. Is there any device we are using over here? Yes, sir. There is a locking device. Yes, sir. Locking is, device. Uh, lock. What is that? Very, very nice. Very nice. We are having the locking device. Means that could be a padlock over there. Very nice. Very yes. nice. So, guys, these these are basically uh, we are having fixed guard and protective devices is basically the locking device locking system as you mentioned saha very nice okay so this is the end of our module 9.4 and uh, in module in this whole chapter what did we discuss we discussed instead of giving you summary from the one slide just we will be having a quick review of the whole unit and over here yes 
in element 9 which was all about the work equipment what did we discuss we basically discussed about the general requirements for work equipment in which we discussed about simple hand tools like hammer chisel screwdriver we discussed about the handheld power tools like portable electrical drills circular yeah. saw then we discussed about the single machine for for example photocopier we are having mobile work equipment like uh, tractor or mobile crane we are having machine assemblies like different machines are assembled together different units are assembled together and they are giving you one output okay so this is uh, this is the different kind of uh, work equipment we are having on our job site then we discussed about the suitability regarding the task and environment and condition we discussed about the standard st uh, standardization of the equipment then we discussed about how we are going to prevent access to the dangerous part of the machine using some kind of guard then we discussed about the restriction in the use then we discussed about the information training and instruction and use of work equipment by the user okay then we went for the maintenance requirement we discussed different three different kind of maintenance one of them was planned preventive maintenance which we call ppm one of them is, is condition based maintenance which we call cbm and next is breakdown maintenance and uh, then we discussed about the maintenance requirement that uh, usually uh, we took the example of shutdown procedure and then we identified why the maintenance is considered as high risk activity after that we move to the maintenance uh, requirement that we should be having competent staff we should be having some kind of power source isolated stored power must be released dangerous moving part of the machine should not be accessed at that time when we are maintaining uh, maintaining the machine then precaution for the safe access and use of manual handling aids should be there then we discuss about the controls emergency stop equipment lighting requirement and the space when we are maintaining the machine in module 2 we discussed about the hand tools uh, their hazards their control then we discussed about the power tools their hazards their control and the requirement for the or you can say safe practice and then we move to the mechanical and non mechanical hazard we discussed different mechanical hazards starting from crushing shearing cutting uh, crushing, shearing, cutting, entanglement, drying in or nipping in, impact, stabbing or puncture, friction and abrasion. And in case if we are having high pressure fluid, if it leaks out or if it gets injected in our body, these are the mechanical hazards which are because of the moving part of the machine. Then we move to the non mechanical hazard which are not because of the moving part of the machine like electricity noise vibration hazardous substances ionizing non ionizing radiation <clears throat> extreme temperatures ergonomic slip trip and fall fire and explosion then we uh, had one example basically assignment was given to you then we move to the uh, control measures for the mechanical or non mechanical hazard we identified different kind of guards like fixed, we identified interlock guards, we identified adjustable or self-adjusting guard, we identified the trip devices or sensors, two hand controls, emergency stop controls, then protective appliances like push sticks, jigs or clamps. Then we took some example from the uh, industrial machinery, okay, and we tried to identify mechanical, non-mechanical, uh, sorry, mechanical and non-mechanical hazards, and we try to identify how we are going to control these mechanical and non-mechanical hazards. And then finally, we move to the requirements for the guards and the safety devices. I hope so. This chapter was very easy, short, and I hope so. All the things are very well understood all the points would have been well understood by everyone in case if there is any point you can ask me any question guys this understood well sir it's understood well. yeah no sir great
so what about after the break shall we start our next session our next lesson or shall we put it on tomorrow will be fine sir yeah. sorry yes sir sir sorry one day one one day one topic tomorrow yes, by okay. okay fine tomorrow we will be having our element 10 element 10 which is about fire we are basically remaining with only two elements one is fire and one is electrical uh, electrical safety or electricity okay yes, uh, okay adil and uh, the, we will be starting our next session uh, by tomorrow and uh, by the way for all the all the other lectures recorded lectures these would be shared uh, now inshallah within 15 to 20 minutes I hope so these would have been uh, i mean converted and uh, these would be shared by today inshallah so let's let's end up now guys and uh, see you tomorrow inshallah okay bye assalam alaikum bye allah hafiz and assalam alaikum thank you thank you sir thank you